You know, they don't, they don't come in fish fish for no reason. I'm so scared. Bring him around and we shoot him. You are the god boy. Yes. All right. We are them tonight. As one man cooler. There we go. See, this is a jack. Known as Cavalli. Come on, come on. Hold him up, hold him up. He doesn't want it. You don't want it, Jack, right? Um, Kosh, you don't want it, right? Put in your cooler, Leroy. It's a big jack. You can barely fit in the cooler, look. Okay, we get two, we get two. It's two you have, it's two you have, Leroy, it's two. It's two fish we have on. The worst could happen now is if the other rod run off too. Oh, yeah. Leroy, what happened? Hey, Leroy, hold this rod and bring this here. I get him by to see how hurry up. Oh, yeah. He goes and going over there. Yeah, we're so clean. My line is between here, too. So take your time, take out the fish for us. Already got a. Big Jack. John right. over here. And I got mullet in the bucket. Come quickly, Leroy. Okay, Le Leroy, leave this and go. Which one? Oh. Second rod. It came up, it came up. The fish came up. Bro, I gotta catch three more fish by the time. Hardly right. Put it, you got you cleared out your push? Alright. Watch it, watch it by line. Watch my watch my rod. Hmm. Here's a measuring stick, Leroy. Huh? Okay, you put out your rod. Put out your rod for us. So it's 18 to 27. He's just under, he's just at 26. Oh, we got Ellie right, what we got? <laughs> Leroy. Definitely have him on here, Leroy. Yeah. Let's see what he is. Oh yeah, he's way out there. Gotta get this one for sure. Yeah. Huh? I had a red under just now too, you know. I had a red under fighting him just now to bring him up and he cut the line. Nice red underneath. Yes, and I, I bring it up and I, and I he was just running with the line on it, but bounced like a red too. Let's see what you got going on. You got a light in the water there? See him? Come on, come on, get him in there. Okay, now I got him so I can control I can control the line and the light, don't worry. Okay. There we go guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You in? We good? One shot, one shot. In the bag. I got my boys with me tonight. My boy, yeah, one shot. One shot, man. One you shot. know, you need to pay. Wow, man. You, must you need to pay me. Look at that.
first excited. One shot. You Check him out. Any bigger or any smaller. That's it. 26. On the money, 26. 26 and a half. 26. 26 and a half. All right. Right here. 26. Put him on the ruler. Put, put him under the ruler. Put him on the ruler, Leroy. Right here. Look. 26 and a half. Look at how people will lose the money tonight. 26. No. No. 25. Pinch, 25. pinch your tail. Pinch your tail. It's 26. 26. <laughs> you know, they don't, they don't call me the fish whisperer for no reason. Blows and skirts. Bring him around. Let me shoot him. You are the God's wife. 26. <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> Got him? We're going to go cook a nice... You know, what we should cook with this, Leroy? What well, we should curry him. We should curry him? Curry him. Okay. So, is he the curry or we grill him? One of the two. Him Put him in the cooler. Please. You know what, Leroy? I need a picture with the two of them. Where you cool at it? Put them in here by the time. There we go. So I got my limit. Come on, Leroy. Check what we catch it tonight. Big reds. This is the this is the bait we're using tonight. Some live mullet. And tonight, I'm hooking them by the tail. Bro, I gotta change the channel to the fish whisperer. Man said 26 and it was right on point. 26. 26. That's what it's doing. 26. I need to use you as a light man, and I think you'll get me. So these were the redfish from last night. See their ice down. This is going to help in the fillet process. So when I'm filleting the fish, I like to go right behind the head, all the way up. There's lots of meat behind there. And then come all the way down the backbone. So if you notice, I'm using two knives. This one is a heavy, more sturdy knife. That's going to go right through the meat, right along the backbone. So we don't waste anything. Look at that. Right on the bone. And then this helps to cut the heavy bones that are usually by the rib cage. Right here. All right, let's do the other side. Same process. Go right behind the head. Along the backbone again. You'll notice I do something different here. I stopped right by the tail, which I should have done on the other side too, but I forgot. This is just going to be easier for taking the meat off the skin, and it's going to leave the skin and the scale and everything on there. You just got a hole and pull it firm right along the skin, along the um, skin, and you're just going to left with just the meat. Just work the knife right along. See, there it goes. Let's cut this piece out. That's it. All you left with is a scale and, and a thin skin. So now you just got to check for the bones. Make sure there's nothing in there because the kids are going to be eating this too. There's just some pin bones along here. That's easily take care of. You can cut the, the belly piece out. So I still like to go through the fillet with my, with my hands to make sure there's no extra bones anywhere. So if you want to get this bloodline out, you get the knife and just thinly skin it off, and that's it. And this is the other side. This fish is a really nice fish. Makes a nice sandwich. You can make anything with this fish. Just today I'm going to be making some blackened fish with this. I'm going to make my own seasoning. Just glide the knife right on the bottom. Pull firmly, and there's going to be your fillet. You're going to stick the knife and get rid of the other red bloodline on there. Look at that, beautiful. Check for the bones again.
this fish doesn't fall apart. So it's a very nice fish to make sandwich. Um, you know, it's it's not too flaky. So it's a nice it's a nice form fish. Safety first. See, the knife almost slipped. Let me use this thinner knife, and that's going to go right along the back and get that red bloodline off. I should have bled the fish on the um when we caught it that last night, but I didn't, and that would have saved me some of this skinning of the of the meat right now. So I'm going to finish up here. I'm going to wash it, clean it up, and then we're going to go season it. Hey, and if this is something that interests you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Drop me a comment. Let me know how you fillet your fish. You know, am I doing something different from yours? Love to hear about it. So after cleaning the fish, I usually want to get most of the moisture out of it. So this is what I do. Put it on a paper towel, sap it up, get everything from the back and the front up, out. And here we're going to use some melted butter. So when I melted this, I let it to get back to room temperature because I don't want it to be hot. And this is my homemade blackened seasoning. I'm going to show you real quickly how I mix all of this together. So here it is. Salt. Black pepper. Onion powder. Garlic powder. Cayenne pepper. Paprika. Thyme. Rosemary. That's a nice kick some basil and some oregano. These are all dried and we're all gonna blend it up in this like a little coffee mixer. This is my wife own so hopefully she doesn't come home and catch me using it doing all these dry spices. And this is all gonna blend together just for about a minute, minute and a half and it should be fine. Blackened season need to be very 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 fine. So I'm gonna show you how nice mine looks and this is going to go really nice on the fish. Yeah, that's the texture I'm looking for. So that's our seasoning. And here's our fish. We're just going to soak it in the butter. Then we're going to put it aside. And then we're going to season, put our blackened season on top of this. So you want to get it nice and coated, the butter. I'm just going to go ahead and do all this fillets. Some people do not want to use the butter, but the butter helps to keep the fish nice and moist and gives an extra layer of flavor. So now let's put our dry rub on here. Put it on generously because there's not a lot of salt in this seasoning. But you want all the different spices and rubs to get in there because that's going to help in the blackening process when it reaches the pan. So another quick note about this. When doing this, this blackening fish, it's good to get a heavy duty pan if you don't have a cast iron pot. Because you want the heat to be very, very hot on this. So I'm going to flip these over and then we're going to coat the other side with the seasoning too. I'm going to let it rest for about 15 minutes before I before I started on the um, fire. You can also do this on the grill. This fish is so nice. And as I said, we're making sandwiches with this and also we're going to do some chips. I did some plantain chips, some potato chips and some sweet potato chips. So let's just rub this on real nice. Oh, give it a good coating. So while the pan is heating up, I'm going to put it on medium first and let it start slowly so the, the whole pan itself can get hot. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to make a simple garlic mayo spicy sauce that goes really nice. It's a nice dip. As you can see, it's garlic. I'm going to squeeze some lemon in there, got some parsley and some cayenne pepper. I'm going to put this aside in the fridge and this works very well with any seafood. A little bit of salt. 
I'm gonna mix this up and leave this in the fridge. The kids are gonna love this when they come home. Okay, it looks like the pan is almost ready. Yep, it's getting there. All right. So I'm just gonna put two fillets in at a time because I want the heat to be right under the fish. You know, if you overcrowd the pan, the ones in the end are not gonna cook evenly. And that's, you know, you gotta be flipping them and moving them around. So this way I wanna check the crust. I wanna make sure everything is being done properly. Blackened fish is about getting the bottom nice and dark and black and inside must still remain moist. So that's where the high heat comes in. And you can look along the side and you can tell when the fish is ready to flip. But I'm gonna add a little bit of butter on top of this too. And that's gonna help blacken the side also, get it a nice crusty, flaky kind of um, texture. This is the same butter we had from before. Yes, as you can see, the butter is, is, is caramelizing along the side of the fish. Can't wait for this to be finished. So you got to keep an eye on it. So I usually do it for about a minute, minute and a half on each side, depending on the thickness of the fillet. And you can look at the side and you can know when it's ready to flip. You know when about a quarter way up is cooked, then you can flip them over and leave it here for another minute, minute and a half. And that is going to be just the right cooking temperature I'm looking for. I'm just going to drizzle it with a little bit more butter. This is just going to add more flavor. You don't want to add the butter, that is fine too. I'm going to take them off and put them on this pan. If you notice, there's some paper towel under because huh, you know how it is when the oil stick on the pan. Then I'm gonna get an earful later about that too. All right, let's look at this. Oh yes, nice, I think this is done. Yes, yes it is. Let's take it out and leave it to drain off the excess oil and butter that's on there. And we're gonna set up and do the rest off. So again, I'm only doing two fillets at a time. These two are two thinner pieces, the, uh, the bottom of the fillet by the tail. So this I only did for one minute per side because, you know, I don't want to I don't want to burn the fish at the same time. Hey, and if you guys like this recipe, go ahead and give me a like, drop me a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We have much more awesome content coming up too. I have lots of other videos that you can take a look at. I also created a nice playlist. And look at that, it's getting nice and crusty. I think this is ready to be flipped over. Nice, remember these pieces are thinner, so I gotta be a little bit more careful. I don't want it to fall apart too. Mm -mm. I wonder if this neighbor is gonna smell this fish today again. All right, time to take it off. Again, put this to drain on the baking tray. And we're gonna finish off with the other two fillets. Usually you want the pan to, to get back a little bit hot, especially with the thicker fillets. So then I'm gonna add these afterwards. I think I'm gonna use these two in my sandwich. Same process, just add some butter, just to keep it moist on top too. And look at that guys. This blackened fish is delicious. Can't wait. Sure you're gonna enjoy this. All right, let's flip these. Give it a minute, minute and a half, and then we're gonna take them off. Our fish is done, sandwich is prepped, I got my fries ready, some pickles, and there's my mayonnaise, and there's our fish for the fish and chip. I got some little bit of wedges of lemon, I don't know why we need that. I got some plantain chips and some sweet potato. So let's just dig right in. Look at this, nice, soft, 
Mm-mm. Gotta take a second bite. Delicious, delicious. You gotta try this. Mm. Oh my, can't waste this nice dipping sauce. Mm. Put that aside. Let's try on the sandwich now. You can use any bread, any sandwich bread you want. You can bake your own one too. You can add some lettuce if you want. I'm just going to dig in just like that. Can't wait. I've been cooking for hours, prepping the fish, hungry. Mm -mm. Fries, you can eat it with ketchup or pepper sauce. I'm just going to dip it right in this delicious mayo sauce. And that's it. Let me grab another bite. Thanks everyone for watching. Hope you enjoy. Please do consider subscribing to the channel. And look at that. Delicious white meat fish. Tasty, tasty, tasty. Alright, hope you do try my recipe. And if you do, drop me a comment below. Let me know how it came out. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm also going to leave a few more videos at the end here for you to take a look at.